So Ableton have just released a new update in their public beta to version 12 of Ableton. It's called 12.1 and it's available for registered users on their website. And the biggest talking point is this audio effect called Auto Shift. And we're going to be talking about all of the changes, but this is the most significant one because this is the one that people have been asking for for so many years. It's basically like Auto Tune and it tunes your vocals. So you don't have to buy a plugin to do some tuning. You can just use this. Now, is it an Auto Tune killer? I don't really know because Auto Tune has a lot of functionality, but it feels like it could be a little Alter Boy killer because it does a lot of similar stuff to Little Alter Boy, but maybe even a bit more than what it does. So it's pretty good so let's check it out straight away first thing i'm going to do is i've recorded a drum beat a piano using scalar and i'm going to record some vocals here so i'm going to switch the auto shift off here and record some vocals right now auto shift is so so cool what do you think it's so so cool okay so that's the vocal there nothing special about that vocal but we're going to just increase that volume a bit Shift is so Let's go so and see cool. what the auto shift does. What do you, think you can actually select the so notes so that are applicable. So cool. You can actually see which notes are hitting hit as well. Auto shift is so so cool. So what we can change it to C major or so C minor. So cool. We can change it to any of these chords actually. Auto shift is so so cool. until you get the basically the scale what that you think, you think might work. It's so so and then we can change the actual pitch. Oh, so, so cool. And we can change the format. And we can get the format to follow. And we can get the format to follow or not follow the pitch. And we can just reduce that dry wet to get a bit of a harmonic effect. Oh, shift is so, so cool. What do you think? It's so, so cool. So that's all really cool, and I really think that that works really well, actually. The other thing you can do is uh, activate scale awareness. And what that does is if you actually go into the clip and you select the scale of the song, so I've already selected that the scale of this clip is F sharp. You go into here, it will just basically inherit that, and it will try to use that scale. Shift is so and then you can actually change the the tuning based on scale degrees or within that scale. So, for example, like this. Auto shift is so, so cool. what do you think and we can actually increase so, that smoothness so cool. or reduce the smoothness there. So that's all really cool, and I'm going to just unselect current scale awareness. I think that's really useful if you're making a song on a particular scale, obviously. And this is where it really is very different to a external VST, because this is built in to work with Ableton 12. So this kind of useful functionality, like scale awareness, is extremely useful on auto shift. But what I really want to try is using the MIDI in. So I want to use the MIDI in, so it's taking input from the scalar track, which is that keyboard track, we'll just solo that. So it's doing that, it's taking that input. Now we're gonna go from mono, where it starts as mono, we're gonna go in and use two voices here. Auto shift is so, so, cool. so it's taking two voices, it's just it's so, so cool. readjust the pitch there and the dry wet. Let's increase the voices now to four. Auto shift is so, so cool. What do you think it's so, so cool? We just remove that vibrato. So, so cool. What do you think it's so, so cool? So you can see there straight away, it sounds uh, almost like a vocoder, but you know, it is really good and it sounds great. Now the thing that I want to do now, just let's just delete that audio that I recorded before, is I want to show you something that I really like about this called live mode. So basically what you can see here under L is the latency readout. So depending on the pitch range, you'll get different latencies. 
and for some reason bass has a very high latency so we're going to stick to mid but if you use live mode they will use delay compensation and you'll have basically no latency what that means is you can actually record live you can record live and what's really good is you can record live based on input scales that we have here from this piano track so let's now just do some live recording and it's just pretty amazing how good it is because i've tried this before and it sounds great there's no delay compensation there's no delay compensation there's no delay compensation actually there's a lot of delay compensation ah. the attack here. So it starts straight away and reduce the release. There's no delay compensation. There's no let's record it. There's some delay compensation and it helps me sing live live live. So cool. So with a bit of tweaking, I think auto shift can be a pretty magnificent tool. And I think if you're actually a really good singer, kind of like auto tune, if you're a good singer, this will just accentuate the vocals, really. This is really good and a definite reason to upgrade to version 12. And by the way, 12.1 is in public beta, but it's also a free update. You don't have to pay for it if you already have version 12. And that's not all, folks. There's some actual really good improvements that I just wasn't expecting, and they're very good like for a workflow and functionality. So, for example, with automation, what you can do now is you can click on any section of a clip like that and press enter, and that will draw the notch. So if you go down or up, it will just increase or decrease the value of that automation and the reason why this is really important is because now Ableton have allowed you to do this automation just using a keyboard rather than using a mouse keyboard combination and that is definitely going to help with workflow so say we go on to the right section here press enter and then press enter again you can do all sorts of really cool things let's press enter again move right and we're going to move this one here press enter I'm going to add say I'm going to add number six here so I've gone up six dBs and we'll just move right again and we'll just do minus two. So you can see there straight away using just my keyboard and entering values and moving things right and left and shifting things around. You've got a very fast workflow. It took me a few minutes to learn how to use this, but really it, that's an, a very small investment in time really compared to the value you're going to get through your Ableton working lifetime. So this is a great great addition. In addition to that, there's a few MIDI transformation tool adjustments. So there's one called Glissando, there's one called LFO. Now, I'm not going to show them because I don't have any MPE available instruments, unfortunately. What's really cool about, say, Glissando is if you just change the settings like that and then click on MPE, you can see here and click on Transform, Glissando kind of basically do some curve blendings like that. You can barely see it, but it's doing some curve blendings, which is really cool. And same with LFO. LFO has got some pretty outrageous type of uh, pitch bends. This is on the actual MIDI note, which as I said, I can't actually demonstrate to you, but it just looks just superb. But what's really good is this one here called Chop. Now I really like Chop because it's going to take a chord like this. Let's increase that to eight parts and we increase it to one gap. Now I really like this. This is, I think this is cool. So it's just taking the notes and adding the gap. So if we add say two gaps, There's another one there. This kind of reminds me of Captain Epic. It's except that you've got a lot more sort of overall control, I guess, once you get used to using this. So say, for example, you just type in 16 parts and we keep the gaps to three. So we just change it to minus four. Let's change it to minus two. The minus is just gonna move it to the left. And then you've got all these variation values so it kind of humanizes the sounds just move this back to eight and variation back to zero what you can do also is you can actually personalize your pattern so you can do something like this you can add or take away things you can do a stretch by four like that on a specific note so 
So you can see straight away that Chop actually is becoming very quickly one of my favorite new MIDI transformation tools. It is very, very good. And if you have kind of boring static chords, this is really your go-to for getting the most out of those. So I think really definitely try Chop. Now they've also enhanced a couple of the plugins. One is Saturator. So you can see Saturator here it looks pretty similar to the previous Saturator, but you have a few differences. So you have a few extra presets here. You've got Bass Shaper, for example. So let's just take a listen. Color on or off. And then you've got these new things. You've got a hard clip. So I think that's pretty cool. And then you've got some of the old ones that are pretty good too, but definitely a improvement to the previous shaper. And you can obviously set high quality or pre DC filter if you right click on it. So definitely a good little update there. And the one I really liked was limiter. So if we just go in and pull a limiter in, think about limiter, it's definitely not going to be a killer of a Fab Filters Pro L or anything like that. But it has a lot of the features that I was looking for in a limiter. And because it's low latency, it's actually a good limiter to add at the end of your mix because it's got all of the tools that you need in a limiter and it's it's um, low latency, so it really helps you move forward with the project very quickly. They've basically changed the interface quite a lot. You can see how the interface looks really quite different. And they've added look ahead, they've added true peak soft clip modes, and they've got mid side routing as well as left right routing. So let's just take a listen to how that sounds. Let's just increase that look ahead. And we're going to true peak mode. Just reduce the ceiling there. Let's increase the input. Soft clip. Let's use the maximize on so that lowers the threshold. We've got auto release and then we've got the left right link so we can actually, at the moment they're 100% linked, but you can actually unlink them here and you can do mid side routing, you can unlink them here as well. So, really cool addition. True Peak is a real fantastic addition. I really like that a lot. Now something that they've added, which I'm actually surprised wasn't in the system before, but it's a very useful addition, is a set template to default groove. So for example, if you want a groove, one of my favorites is the Disco Light Swing Groove, and you want to make sure that that's always on by default. Save live set as default set like that. And then if you go and open a new live set, you can see the Disco Light in swing is there. And you obviously you can switch it off if you want, but you don't need to have that. That's gonna always load every time because that's the sort of music you want. And actually it has also saved my MIDI and my drum track, which is perfectly fine because I can always go ahead and change that later. The other thing I really like is auto tags. So the thing about version 12, when that first came out, there wasn't really a lot of tagging in the samples. So all of these great filter functions were kind of useless because there was nothing to tag off filter on. If we go to any sample like this and I click on edit, you can see straight away that it's a loop. And if we just scroll down a bit, we can also see it's a drum loop. So that's auto tag that. So next time I go and search for drum loops, this will appear as an option, which is super cool because before we didn't have that. There's a lot of things here that maybe you can personally tag. If I want to tag it as harp, I'm not going to, but if I wanted to tag it as harp, I could just go ahead and do that. So auto tagging and editing of auto tags is a massive workflow improvement, especially using the new filter functionality of version 12. And finally, one of the simplest, but probably one of my favorite new additions is the viewing of undo, so undo history. So what's really cool about this is anytime you make, say, a change or you do anything, so I'm gonna move this note here, for example, up a little bit. So you can see there, I've moved the notes up two places and it's now in my undo history. So if I didn't like the last two movements, I could just simply go back to there where it was, or I can move it forward to where it was there. So any sort of addition that I've done, you can go into undo history and undo everything visually. You can go in and see what you did and find the place to undo. So that to me is a massive, uh, really simple, but really useful new feature. So that's it for 12.1. I know there's a lot more features than that, but I didn't want to overlook load you guys with stuff. I've just wanted to show you the best stuff, in my opinion. I think it's just a really great addition. I don't know when it's going to be released, but you can always go to the public beta on their website. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please remember to subscribe because there's going to be more videos about these products very soon.